has come to give revelation and deliverance and freedom from a sinful nature. So God wants to help you actually. And that's why the first thing that God wants to do is to speak through Jesus and lead you into repentance. And this is where many people, they skip it and they, they're directly pointing to Jesus to the cross. But Jesus Christ himself said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. Now, the first thing that Jesus is preaching on the earth is to let people know about repentance to God. Jesus is pointing to God. For Jesus himself said, the Father who sent me is greater than I. Hallelujah. If we read in the book of Acts chapter 3 verse 19, it says, Repent therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. If you repent to God, the book of Ezekiel 36 verse 26 says that if you repent, God will take your stony heart out of you. What is the problem? A sinful heart. For all wickedness comes from a deceitful heart and is full of the things of the world, the things of the flesh. And the Bible says, don't walk by the things of the flesh of this world, but be ye transformed by the Spirit of God and walk in the ways of the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. The book of Proverbs, chapter 28, verse 13, it says, Whoever covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes their sins, they will have mercy. This is also what we see in the uh, third book of John, where the Bible says that the light of the world has come through Jesus Christ. But people have rejected the light because they walk in darkness and they want to uncover their things, their sins, because they are evil and they are in darkness. Amen. So Jesus says, step out of that evil, step into the light, so that the devil and the evil works may be exposed. And you can get deliverance, you can get healed. And God wants to transform a wicked heart and give you a heart of peace and of a new conscience. We read in Matthew chapter 3, verse 8. Therefore, the Bible says, bear fruit worthy of repentance. There are hundreds of Bible scriptures where God is calling people into repentance to confess and forsake your sins so that your body may be healed. We read in 2 Chronicles chapter 30, verse 9. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful and will not turn His face from you if you return to Him. So you need to turn to God. That is what repentance means. It's turn around from the things of the world and face your eyes upon God. Trust on Him and lean not on your own understanding. For the Bible says, your ways are not my ways. My thinking is higher than your thinking. So you must be trusting unto the Lord. In the second book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 9, the Bible says, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that anyone should perish, but that all should come into repentance. The Bible calls every human being into repentance, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. No person on earth can say they have never sinned. Who can say that they have never lied? Nobody. So all are a liar. So all fall short of the glory of God. So if you die, you will have a problem spiritually before God because God is holy. And He wants to transform you from the inside. He wants to radically transform you into the image of His holy Son, Jesus Christ, who was holy, who was without sin. So you can be holy and blameless, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the book of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 13, the Bible says, but go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners unto repentance. Yes. Over and over the Bible talks about repentance, that we must turn from our wicked ways. Repent is another word for repentance means to change your mind. Just like Saul, he was prosecuting all the Jews and killing the ways of Jesus. But then Jesus made him blind. First he was blind, and now he saw, for he realized that Jesus Christ is God. And then he radically changed. He, he was writing 21 of the New Testament letters. He was preaching more boldly, and he's suffering more for God because he was just wrong. We can all be wrong, we do something wrong, but God gives us revelation to this Holy Spirit, for the Holy Spirit is this called the Spirit of Truth. Just like the Apostle Peter is one of the greatest apostles, the closest friend. Peter meets the rock. 
And Jesus even gave him the, the keys of the kingdom. And he said, on my rock, I will build my kingdom. But Peter, he saw all the miracles of Jesus. He saw the, the five loaves of bread be transformed into 5,000, 15,000 loaves of bread. He saw Jesus walking on water. He saw the lepers being healed. He saw the blinds they were seeing. He saw that the lame were walking. He saw all the miracles Jesus did. But when Jesus, before Jesus went to the cross, the Apostle Peter said, I will not deny you, but the Lord Jesus Christ said, you do not have the Holy Spirit. You will deny me three times before the rooster will crow. And he denied him because he was afraid. Oh, but when the Holy Spirit comes, he was transformed. He was renewed. He was a new man. Hallelujah. When he first, he was scared. Now yes. he was bold when he was walking away. Now he said, I cannot deny the things that I have seen. For all the glory comes to the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross and rose on the third day. And then he gave the promise for those who believe that receive grace, the Holy Spirit. And it is the gift of God. That is the goodness of the gospel. That God loves every person here walking because everybody is a sinner. Everybody has done wrong things in their lives. But God wants to forgive you. That is called grace. That you get what you do not deserve. The love of God. So I'm calling every person here and I say, don't reject God's love for you. He's like, standing like a father standing with his open arms for a child that was disobedient and walking away. And he said, come my child, come my son, come my daughter. And I will give you a robe. I give you new shoes. I put a ring on and I will give you meat. I will slaughter the best meat for you. And he will give you all the good things. He said, I will set you free. For the Bible says, who the son sets free, is free indeed. That is the gift of God. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You are a whosoever, right? So if you want to accept Jesus, you can come today. For today is the day of salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. If we look at the book of James, chapter 4, the Bible says, draw near to God, and he God will draw near to you. So you need to do something. You need to draw near to God. You need to do something. It's not automatically. He says, draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. 